If I were a betting man, I would wager that at some point in your life, you have ran into the website Fandom. Yeah, you know, it's the website that has, like, a Wikipedia for, like, every TV show, video game, movie, cinematic universe, etc. Like, there's the Star Wars wiki, the RuneScape wiki, the Harry Potter wiki. I bet they even have, like, a, like, a Courage the Cowardly Dog wiki. You know what? I'm gonna look it up. Oh my god, I actually didn't think they would have it, but yeah, they actually do have that. Yeah, so my point being, you know this website's got a wiki on, like, every video game, every movie. Well, I didn't know this, but part of this website is that every year, they do a sort of study or research thing called Inside Gaming, and it's kind of cool they do this purely for research and statistics purposes, to find out not things about video games, but about gamers. You know, just trends, stuff like that. What kind of games do people like? What kind of games people are more interested in these days? And maybe most importantly, why do people play games? You know, what's like the main motivation behind why people play games? And it's interesting because as time can go on, this can kind of change. That could be for a variety of different reasons. Games themselves can change. Or who knows, maybe the average gamer can get older and things change with that. So this year's study was actually just released today by Fandom. And it is very interesting what this study has revealed. So this study showed that, and this was a 10% increase from the previous year, that actually the majority of gamers play games as a means to express creation, imagination, and self-expression. Now I'm seeing that stress relief is also a very popular reason also why people play games. But yeah, it looks like the big thing that stuck out is that there was a 10% increase in players that reported wanting to play games to create, imagine, and express themselves. And gamers who played games for these reasons were actually 30% more likely to increase their time in front of the screen playing games. So the big one here was self-expression. So exactly 60% of the roughly 5,000 people that took this survey pointed specifically towards self-expression as well why they play games. And it is specifically mentioned that games like Minecraft, Roblox, and Fortnite are the big kinds of games that people really love the most because these games allow you to, to express yourself and to create and to obviously broaden the imagination. I mean, obviously when you're playing Minecraft, for example, you know, it's kind of like playing with Legos as a kid and the sky's the limit in a sort of way because if you're using your imagination and you have this sort of sandbox kind of game, you can pretty much do anything. Now, I think this is incredibly interesting and it really does make a lot of sense. Not only why these games are so big, you know, Minecraft, Fortnite, Roblox, but like, I don't know, so me personally, I don't know if it's just, you know, I'm getting old or what it is, but like recently I have tried to play some of these really big, critically acclaimed games that really focus on story. And for some reason, I just couldn't get into it. This could be for a multitude of different reasons, but these are like super critically acclaimed games, like the two that come to mind that I tried and I just couldn't get into were Elden Ring and and Persona 5. And don't get me wrong, like, total respect to those games. I didn't hate them. I mean, they seemed cool, but I just couldn't get into them. And maybe Elden Ring is kind of a bad example. I don't think that's as much of a story-driven game. But, I don't know, me personally, as I get older, I almost feel like some of these games, some of these story-driven games with a lot of lore and depth to them, as absolutely fantastic as I'm sure they are, it's almost like it's just too much of a, of a time investment. You know, like, there's all of these games that are coming out that look cool, look awesome, great story story, great lore, and I just kind of can't get into them. And I feel like y you probably know what I'm talking about. You've maybe been there recently with a game that you tried out and you couldn't get into. I don't know. I mean, this here, uh, all this rambling here, <laughs> this is just my personal experience. But that to me is why games like Minecraft are so great and just so easy to pick back up wherever I am in life. And I don't know. It's why these kind of games to me are timeless. I, I love story games. I hope I can eventually kind of get out of my hunch or, you know, my rut or whatever you would call it of not being able to get into some of these cool games. But I don't know, sometimes the simpler, the better. Yet when it comes to games, according to this study, the majority of players would agree that the graphics, the environment, and maybe even the story of a game is not as important and appealing as creation, self-expression, and imagination.